here's an example of how perceptual knowledge, the idea of the objectivity of perceptual knowledge can be problematic. It's called the argument from illusion. Right? And this makes the case against awareness, or at least its veridicality, uh, by showing how we can be aware of something uh, one way, where, uh, where the reality of the situation of what we perceive is quite uh, the opposite. Right? Illusions make us believe they are something that they are not. That's the very definition of an illusion. Right? Um, but they, uh, the fact that we experience the, uh, uh, an illusion as what it is not challenges that veridicality of awareness. Right? So we are aware of the illusion, but not as an illusion. Right? So the argument roughly goes, one, there is an illusory experience, um, and in an illusory experience, one is not aware of an ordinary object. We're not aware of things as they are. Two, the same account of experience must be given to both veridical and non-veridical experiences, or veridical ones and illusory ones in this case. Three, therefore, one is never perceptually aware of ordinary objects as such. Right? So it undermines the objectivity of perceptual knowledge right? by undercutting the uh, veridicality of perceptual experience. Uh, there's a similar stronger form of the argument from hallucination, uh, but we can address uh, roughly the argument from uh, both of them, uh, both account, uh, of these accounts, with what is called the rope snake analogy. Right? Uh, the rope snake analogy comes from the Deuta Vedanta school of uh, Indian philosophy. And it goes uh, as follows, right? In a room, so first in a room, there is a coiled rope, or there's a coiled rope in a dark room, right? You enter the room, right? And see a snake, right? And you react as though it were a snake, right? You react as though it were a snake. Um, reaction of fear, abound, yada, yada, yada. And then, uh, you know, uh, so you leap back out of the room uh, behind the corner and just like heart palpitating with uh, fear and adrenaline. And then you go, peek your head back in, you see the snake hasn't moved. So you go in and you uh, bring a torch, right? It's ancient India, right? Or you flip the light switch and you see, so you flip the light switch and in uh, flipping the light switch, you see that it is in fact a rope, not a snake, right? So what we have here are two episodes of perceptual experience, both which provide us with knowledge, one might say, right? We have the initial experience of the, uh, uh, of the rope, as a snake, right? and we have the reaction to that initial experience right? of the rope as a snake, based, uh, uh, so acting based off of misinformation, misperception. And then down the line, we shed light on knowledge, right? We, uh, uh, we come to know some further fact, further evidence, and this allows us to see and experience the rope as a coiled rope. So what we have are two instances of perception spread across time. Right. Uh, what happens is the later veridical experience of the coiled rope as a rope modifies our understanding of the earlier experience. Right. We come to realize that this was not knowledge producing. Right even though the experience, it does not undermine the, uh, 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 the experience, but it does undermine the idea that this was a knowledge producing experience. Right? Misperception then is non-veridical, but it is still a perceptual experience, right? And it 
uh, causes us to act based off of the non-veridical perception, but it does not produce knowledge. Right? And when we come to have a veridical perception down the line that modifies our earlier perceptions and understandings, what occurs is we now have a full account. Right? The veridical perception provides us with knowledge that this was a misperception, right? that it was non-vertical. Right? So here we have an account of how, from ancient Indian uh, Advaita Vedantas, uh, the Advaita Vedantans, that uh, what we have is an account of how veridicality can uh, uh, you know, is it necessary to perceptual experience, but it does, it is necessary to perceptual knowledge, right? We understand that not only were we mistaken through misperception, but we acted on, uh, 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 on faulty knowledge, right? So we can chastise ourselves, right? uh, and we know that we acted wrongly as a result, or incorrectly, uninformed, uh, uninformedly, right? based off of the misperception. And we know that in light of the correct perception. Right? So this is how we can uh, undermine, and uh, uh, this is how we can reconcile, uh, roughly, the uh, you know, problem of perception, right? Uh, problem of veridicality of perceptual experience with perceptual knowledge, right? Perceptual experience must be veridical in order to produce perceptual knowledge.